Well, that's pretty tough to follow. Yeah. You can see why he's my mentor. 15 years. I want you to know, in 15 years, he never said to me, you know, John, that's a dumb idea. He never did. And I know I had some dumb ideas. But he did say, how about this, John? And, you know, that's the kind of group that we formed. And, and, uh, and the same people I started with 15 years ago, I'm still with them. And, you know, a lot of these people, we never even had a really bad argument. Yeah, we disagreed on a few points or whatever, but it's pretty unique. And so anyway, uh, I'm John Brakey, and I am an election scrutineer. I used to be an election gadfly. A gadfly <laughs> comes around, and he bugs you, and he gets on you. But they don't take you serious until you become an election scrutineer, that you have lawyers. And, and it's awful and very important to be able to work with these people. And you know what I go out there and do? I teach the seven C's. Character, capacity, credibility, civility. Hey, I can call you bad names real nicely if I use civility, right? Okay? Also, pride my citizenship. Important, my country. That's who I'm working for. My grandchildren, what country they're going to inherit. But the most important C that I work with is courage. And it's very hard sometimes to go into a state like North Carolina all by yourself and refuse to leave until you build a coalition. And that's what we did in North Carolina. And I'll go into that later. But I do want to get into who we are, what we do. We've been around for 15 years. And, uh, and so basically, as you can see in the slide, uh, it's the same mission that we've had from the very beginning. And I'm not going to read all this stuff because uh, I do have quite a few slides and I really want to kind of get through this thing but I kind of want to know who we are and what we do and what we've learned because we've learned one thing nothing is fixed until we know why it broke we have approached this thing 15 years working on this our breakthrough has come in the last three years and what can I go into it what you're looking at the slide right now and I gotta put my glasses on to get some of my notes is that from what Bill explained, we must have a publicly verified elections and an informed public are key to decorrupting our system. That's what we've discovered. We must stop election officials from hiding or destroying ballot images. Ballot images are public records and must be used to verify election publicly. As we know in the United States, as we enter another crucial election cycle, it's essential to remember that the policies which support our elections are critical to the strength of our fragile, very badly damaged hackable democracy and it's being hacked by all different places i'm not going to stand up here and talk about russians or ukrainians i know that most fraud in this country is done by insiders if you look at it and they have to have an insight to be able to get into it so i don't care who you really are or who it is if it's a fat lady up in some seattle area who just stole a hundred thousand records or a hundred and much amount it's a cat lady who cares okay nobody should be able to get into these systems or whatever you know when we look at the problem you can see on this slide right here that we really do have a very gigantic problem you know 195 million registered voters 13,000 <coughs> voter registrations jurisdictions I should say 187,000 precincts the only good thing I can tell you about all that is about maybe 75 percent of all of them are going to be digital now What's this digital thing this breaky guy keeps talking about, okay? The old system of voting on an optical scan machine was an LED light that came down off the there and it had to be a perfectly made ballot. And if it was a dark spot, it got exhorbed. That was the decision. It purely really was a black box is what it really was. These new systems work differently. And, uh, and of course, if you look at this slide, I think that means a lot. It says, you never change things by fighting the existing reality. To change something, build a new model that makes the existing model obsolete. My God, they did and they hit it. When these ballot images first came out, uh, you know, eight, nine years ago, they used to call the scanner, the, let's say ESNS, who's the biggest company, their digital scanner was called a di digital image scanner. Then all of a sudden, nobody wanted to buy that because people were saying, what have you done? You've created a record that we have to maintain. It's in the chain of custody. I'll explain more on that later. Uh, for our democracy to recover, and when I go into a state, you know, first off, I go in and I do an investigation with my team. We investigate. What, for those, in, and we call it what we put together is a track condition report. Okay, that report is very important. I know every county, I know every election official, I know what their equipment is, 
Because when I go in there and start investigating, interviewing, I want to know before they, I ask the questions, I already know the answers. I just want to size you up. I want to find out if you're real or not. What kind of bull are you pushing? Because that happens a lot. There's a lot of the people who are taught that a good elections administrator is an administrator that hide all the warts. My God, if he's a father, what is he doing? Raising sociopaths? You know, those are the questions that, uh, in the back of my mind, am I really wondering? And it's really, but I do want to say, on the other hand, I meet some wonderful people in elections who really want to there to do a good job. But, you know, sometimes the procedures and how elections are work and how the game is played, that the biggest thing we fight is group think. So, getting back to it. Uh, uh, to really understand what's going on, I have to teach other things, like, well, election fraud is what I'm here for, but, you know, my God, what they're doing with the voter database, voter suppression, different techniques, and now also done by micro-targeting, psycho-targeting, voters using social media, by using social media to attack people, gerrymandering. Wow, I'm in North Carolina. He wrote the book on gerrymandering there. I thank God <coughs> that this lady's offering her dad who died redemption for being a racist pig for doing what he's done across this country, and it's big news, Common Cause got the files, and it could be a tipping point coming because they turned over, I guess, several different computers worth of data of how they rigged this country, and they have found the other documents mixed into it. So it's, you know, it's a hopeful front there on the gerrymandering, it really is. You know, I've learned as I go along, I used to be a psychotherapist when I was very younger, and, uh, and I'm into understanding how group things work, peer pressure. I've learned to unrig the system. My God, we need to first unrig ourselves. We really do, to take a look at what we know. The news we get today, tomorrow turns out to be falsehood or propaganda. We have to make an effort to really understand what's going on. And to understand, the first thing is that damn black box. You know, we've been fighting it for years. And, uh, and, you know, I'll say one thing about Steve over there. Thank you for the work that you've done and how you enlightened me over the years and the study that he's been doing independently uh, as a journalist going into this. But, you know, machines are vulnerable to hacking, uh, the problems with that, you use secret software. We know all of this, you know. I'm not going to step up here because uh, the time span is going to all of this, but I just want to touch base on it. Why is a black box called a black box? You know, I didn't really know that until I said I was doing this presentation. And I didn't realize that our brain is a black box. Boy, there's some black box brains out there. I don't want counting votes, do you? And uh, so we need transparency really bad, okay? And, uh, but I do know that how the game is played and how the tricks are played, okay? Bill's touched into part of it. You know, uh, I like to explain the story. Uh, well, first off, this guy on the screen is Mickey Donahoe. Mickey Donahoe uh, was a cons worked with NSA. He's a cryptologist, had a mind like a steel trap, could understand things and diagnose. And he said this in a court case in 2014 that was very stunning. A logic and accuracy test only tells you that someone has programmed a database so that it has the correct races and candidates on a particular day. Unfortunately, the computer is a black box. And that doesn't tell you anything about what happened minute to minute on election day. It is entirely possible for someone to program the database so it does one thing during the logic and accuracy test, like Volkswagen, I'll go into that in a little while, mm -hmm. and, and differently during election day. It's possible to have a network connection to change the software and what it's doing on election day. So now I want to jump to what we found. I found that connection. When I was in Wisconsin, do you see the picture up there? That is a cellular a motor built into the DS200. There's a number of states that have that. So what can they do? They can change numbers on the fly. Okay, where it was 10 years ago that they would have to pre-program the virus into the system. And of course, when they do this, you know, people they think it's going on to the EMS. Well, it funnels to the EMS, but they know what they're doing. They have all the money in the world to be able to say, at this precinct, we can steal this much, and they can tailor it. I was part of the Fraction Magic team with Bev Harris, uh, with Benny Smith. And the first thing I wanted to learn was how to de-rig, because I did Maricopa for four cycles. And we used to fight them. I had to sue them because they would not commit the election results by precinct before they did the audit. Mm -hmm. And when I learned Fraction Magic, the first thing I asked Benny to teach me was how to de-rig. Because after they pulled the results, within a day, they'd say, here's the results. Because they unrigged 12 precincts. We don't post our poll tapes online in Arizona. Okay? You don't get them. So you could totally uh, have to believe what they say. 
But anyway, the thing that's really fascinating about this right here is that the FBI director said, hey, our voting system is never connected to the internet. <laughs> what did we find? We found all of Florida has it. A lot of state of Rhode Island has it, okay? Uh, there are other states. It's a standard product that comes in the machine. Now, some states say you can't have it like North Carolina, so hopefully they withdraw it, but we never know if they really do because it's illegal to open the box up and take a look because it's not ours. And that's why what we're going to be winding up doing. But I, I just want to show you how it's so easy to defeat and to explain people how bad it is to this logic and accuracy test and they say, well, we know the results are right. You know, I'll, I'll walk in to a county and I'll say, hi, my name's John Brakey and I'm here because I want to help people vote because there's so much cynicism going in our country that people aren't voting. I come in with a different angle and I say to them, how do you verify your election results? Oh, Mr. Brakey, that's really easy. We do a logic and accuracy test before and after the election. And I have to typically, and then they look at me and they go, are you a conspiracy theorist? No, I'm a conspiracy factualist. And I want to tell you some facts. I want you to tell you that in this country, Volkswagen sold 580,000 diesel cars in the United States. And I want you to know they passed emissions maybe 2 million times over that 10-year frame. And they never got caught because the machine knew it was being tested. How did it know? Because they, well, the big reason they, they knew, the machine knew, is that they built sensors onto the back wheels. So when it's there, and the wheels are turning and spinning, and yeah, the computer said, hey, this is a test, because my back wheels aren't going anywhere. So what did it do? It turned on the pollution controls, and it changed its timing, is what they did. You can go online, and you can look at 37 huge parking lots in this country that have 380,000 diesels. They've been penalized by the feds, $2.8 billion, okay? And the total cost of the buyback was $25 billion. A little bit of news has gotten out on this, but it's a really a good way to tell people, hey, you can't trust this stuff. You gotta be able to go ahead and prevent it. How bad is the damage that these things have done? Well, my God, uh, 72,000 people in Europe are dying prematurely because it just wasn't Volkswagen who was doing this after they started. Uh, by the way, it made them the largest car company in the world with this car. They sold like 11 and a half million of these diesels, okay? And then, uh, believe it or not, General Motors is building in Europe. They were cheating too on their diesels, okay? They all were. And now people are paying the penalty. Wouldn't it be awful if presidents were elected this way? That's my concern. Or even senators, or even the people who make decisions on funding and the decisions that are made in this country. So that right there is just a, a pretty incredible. And, and I also, when I go into an election department, you know, I say to them, I'm here because I want to help more people vote. Because if not voting in this country was a presidential candidate in 2016, they won by a landslide. My God, 107 million people who could have voted didn't. They're not carrying those statistics. They're telling you, yeah, we had a turnout of 72%. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a lot of people in this country that believe this. And I refer to these voters as Mark Twain voters, okay? And some 100 years ago, well, Mark Twain said, if voting made a difference, they wouldn't let us do it. Uh -huh. And a lot of people do believe that. I have people I work with, they say, John, what are you doing? You're wasting your time. One of my consultants I work with, husband, refuses to vote. There are other people who come up with, voting has become an act of endorsing your own systematic oppression and perpetuates the illusion that we live in a functioning democracy. <laughs> wow, that hit me pretty hard. I think it's true. Yeah, I agree. And we've got to take it back. That's what we're here for. How do we be proactive? How do we go ahead and do something very special, like make the black box into a transparent box. Other countries have. The Netherlands, just all they had to do was watch what we do. And they said, whoa, those Americans are insane. And they got rid of their systems. A lot of countries are. And it's going to take educating people to know. But getting back to my friend Buckmaster Fuller, what he said was a gift. To change something, build a new model. 
and we found a way to make that model work for us. And you know, I want you to know, me and Bill and Chris Sauter and these other people I work with, we're really bad people. We'll take you to court and we'll ask the judge, Your Honor, can you order them to follow the law? They cannot destroy public records. My God. Let's take a look at this next image right here. Let's talk about how this system really works. Oop, wrong way. What you're looking at here is uh, uh, two ballots. One is the original ballot, and one is a copy. Oh my God, they're exact copies. Oh my God, these are really high quality. Uh, these things, when a, when a digital machine and that ballot goes in there, it doesn't count the ballot. <coughs> it counts the picture that it made, and it's a public record, mm -hmm. okay? I'm running around the country it's defending these images and saying, I'm sorry, you can't destroy that. If it's generated in the chain of custody, it must be preserved. And that's the fight. And the law states that you must preserve this for 22 months. You can't destroy them. But I'll tell you why they're destroying. Bill handled really quick. He said they're protecting the right to cheat now or in some future election. They do not want the public to really know how elections could be counted. We know that these images, I should be able to file a records request, and we have. And what we're learning and what we're getting is a way to go ahead and change the system. We at Audit USA are pioneering an achievable method of public oversight of elections to deter election fraud and ensure transparency and accuracy in vote counts. How are we doing it? We're taking them to court if we have to, and we're winning because it's a basic fundamental right to have those ballots preserved because they're a public record. You know, we do got pretty good public records laws in Florida. I'm getting images. Now I'm going to go back to Florida. We're probably going to sue them again. Okay? And uh, we took them to federal court and we got kicked out because we tried to use the Fed law, but we found that we didn't have a right to private action. But when we file a records request, it's an educational records request. And when we put our name on it, Audit USA, they have to be able to take a good look and say, whoops, geez, look at the team they have and their track record in other states, and I'm going to go into that. But what you're looking at right now is these are states that have digital images, okay? And there's more and uh, coming online. That's the future. The old system went extinct. Thank God. It was awful. That was a black box. It left no evidence behind of how it worked. This one leaves evidence and says, hey, file a records request. And by the way, we discovered that if you get three records, you own the whole thing. But first off, we didn't know that until I went to uh, Florida the first time in September of last year. But we were getting something out of Pima County. And because uh, Bill won a lawsuit in 2007, you know, when Bill talked about that case, he, there was four lawsuits. Three was to collect all the evidence. The fourth lawsuit was, okay, now we want to prove to our county and our state that election fraud is real. That's where the problem came in. They wouldn't let us put that evidence on. And we spent nine years in that case. Going, we went to the Supreme Court once, and then again, and then they rigged it because of a, a judge who had resigned. They got another guy who wanted to be a judge, and he said, okay, you file a court of the brief that caused a conflict of interest. They'll bump you from District 2 Appeals Court to District 1. All a game, all a manipulation, okay? Anyway, what you're looking at on the screen right now, it, it, this is what they call an LVR. Now you've seen a ballot image and you'll see a little more how it works. We want to show you how we can do these audits. And this one right here was the first one we ever got out of Pima County and I sued Pima County uh, with Bill and another lawyer we brought it because Bill is in a very important case because he does a lot of civil rights cases, you know, with, uh, with these Mexicans being murdered on the border. Oh, yeah, he picked up a rock and I shot him, you know? And these kind of crazy things that have happened. Bill's always been on the front and like I said, I'm very grateful for him for all the years he pulled me in and taught me how to be a, uh, an activist uh, after a real activist that he's been all his life. But getting back to this, if you take a look on column A, this is a cast vote record, and that's the number, and uh, there should be a C behind there. We did that, and, and then there's the precinct number, and you can see all those precinct numbers are all mixed up, but don't worry, I got it in Excel. That's the way they gave it to me. I can sort it. How do you want to look at it? It's an incredible. Uh, then you got the ballot style, because you know, there's different styles, and then you got the U.S. Senate race. Now, I can take all of this and say, okay, let's take blind D, and all I want to do is look at the Democrats who won, because uh, it was a primary. You can sort anything and add it up. By the way, this spreadsheet 
stops at HH because there's four ballots in each precinct. You got a green, you got a uh, libertarian ballot, you could have a uh, uh, Democrat and Republican, so you have four ballot styles. And it all fills out. Now, I mention this because I used to work in the Debo old system of Microsoft Access. And that thing was a joke. It really was. I mean, I probably ruined my kidneys because you get on a trail and I'm a pit bull and you hang on it. Oh, I can't. I want to take a break here. I want to keep on this thing. But anyway, when I got this, they told us it was specially made. And I go, oh, gee, I wish this thing was made all over the United States. Because, you know, when you file a records request, you can only get what is there. You can't say, hey, Joe, can you make me this? It doesn't work that way. So anyway, we went in to uh, do a program, because uh, we were very interested in Broward County, Tim Canova, what the whole thing happened there. And we wound up, and it was uh, getting the LVR. I couldn't believe it. Oh my god. If I get the ballot image, if I get the cast vote record, and I get the LVR, the black box is adios. It's a transparent box. Now, I just want to say one thing. That's good. We got a box of transparent, what goes in and goes out. This doesn't cure the problem. There's ballot harvesting going on. There's ballot stuffing. But boy, it's nice to have one that goes on our side for a while, okay? That we can focus on these other problems, the, the voter database and the problems that can happen on that right there. And, uh, you know, on that, and, and so basically going to the next slide is that understanding the ballot images and related documents, this is uh, online, you can find this, and you can go ahead and play with this, and you can see how it works. This explains the three types of records obtained. That's what we need, those three records. They're public records. And if we get those, then we're in a situation that, uh, well, first off, a four, there we go, I just wanted to show this. How ESNS does it, that is ballot number 483I. I stands for image. 483C is the cast vote record. That then is loaded into that LVR. And I'm going to go ahead and show you one right now. This is the one we have online. And you can see 483I, 483C, precinct number 12. Uh, Rick Scott, oh, what a great guy he is, you know. In fact, we saw him steal the election through Broward County because they rigged the ballot design. The consultant who did this, who works in other states, he was $450,000. We find that a lot of people who are doing these riggings are consultants, and they're hidden in the system. We found one in Arizona. We look all over the place with these guys and find out who they are. Usually they're tied up with the person who's printing the ballots. But anyway, that was a side because there's so many things that we've learned that we've committed some documents that you can find online. You can hear about what happened in all these other states we've been in because we've been in quite a few. Uh, anyway, now if you take a look, and let's say I'm going to pull up. Oop, wrong way. Sorry. Now, you're looking at three records. The image, the cast vote record, the list of vote records. And if you take a look, Rick Scott did get that vote, okay? It was a Republican primary, okay? And if you look at the other ones, then you look at the cast vote record, and then you follow the spreadsheet across, you're going to see that those were actually votes. And there's a number of different ways that a group of people can get together and be able to take these spreadsheets we have a system out of Wisconsin that if you had what I call a ballot party, if you got the images, you get them to per precinct, you load 25 at a time, the program will focus on a race. There's four people, two people have clickers, four people have clickers. Let's say you two are accounting for Ronald Reagan and, and, and Laurie's counting for um, uh, Mao Zedong or whatever, or, you know, whatever it is, these two ladies. And, and all of a sudden you do 25 and then you look at each other and say, well, how many did you count? Oh, you got 10? Oh, good, how did you, 10? Okay, you did what, 12, 12? Okay. Next 25. You can go through very quickly and run a count, okay? We're also trying to get people to work with us in building a computer program that can count it to on the precinct level. You fill out an app, that's helpful, but that's down the line or whatever. What I'm saying is, my God, these things could be put online by a precinct like they're talking about doing in San Francisco. They're already doing it in Wisconsin. Uh, in other states, you have to request these things. And that's what we're trying to do is to put a program together to get into these states more. We're trying to put a 14-state plan together and have hire people putting these states to go out there and abdicate. Because I'll say this right now, 
there's nobody really doing it. There's a lot of people sitting in the bleachers and they're saying things, but they're not on the front line. We gotta get on the front lines and do what we did in North Carolina. We won the vote in North Carolina, why? Because we were there, we showed up, we educated. Uh, you know, the chair, you know, I mean, he was a dummy, a Democrat. And he was the second time on the board, and he said, well, we have been using barcodes for a long time. What, where? Look at the marks around the ballot. Those are barcodes. That's what es and S told me. I said, excuse me, fella. Those are tiny marks for alignment. They don't have any message in them, okay? And it was just being given bull. And that's what happens. The only people who are teaching these people are the people who are stealing. The fox is in the hen house. He's telling them what to think. we got to stop it. Because the reality is, transparency is the biggest part of the solution. Transparency in government is offering credit with generating government accountability. Whoa, that's something interesting. Transparency often allows citizens of a democracy through election to control their government by reducing government corruption and bribery and other malfeasance. You know how? We fire them. That's what we do on election day. And we need to do more of that. But we gotta bring people back into the fold. When you have a country that 44% of the people are not voting and they tell you it's more, it's a bunch of bull. Look at the real statistics. And we gotta prove to those people our elections are real because they're not gonna vote. If I wasn't doing what I'm doing, I wouldn't be voting. I'd be with my other friends that don't vote, okay? And so basically, what we're finding is, uh, as Dr. Tom Ryan would say, in summary, Deleting the ballot image it significantly undermines the integrity of the election system that derives all its tabulation data from those images. Wow. And you know, I realized it really hard when a brave judge in Pima County, when he said to Pima County, you know, I'm not computer literate. We got this on film. But I got a question to ask in Pima County. If you take voted ballots, and you were to photocopy those voted ballots, and you use the photocopies to count, what makes you think you can destroy them? You can't. It's in the chain of custody. If you mail in a ballot, you've got coffee stains on it, okay? What are they going to do? They have to assemble two people. They have to open up a ledger. They're going to call that ballot a spoiled ballot. And then they're going to dupe and make a new ballot. And that spoiled ballot is ballot 101 now. And the new ballot is 101 duped and they're married together because somebody might say in a close election, hey, I want to look at this one. They have the right to go back and look. Basically, we stand on strong law to be able to do this, okay? And so I'm gonna keep speeding up a little bit here because I know I'm taking too much time. Uh, fraction magic, what did I learn about fraction magic? Fraction magic can change the vote tallies on the fly if they have a cellular motive because it's a fractional vote. and It'll make everything add up perfectly. The man who found it changed his whole community when Bloomberg News came in and they ran out the old regime. And now their city hall looks like the people that served them. It was a very heavily black community. Of course, black people would love to vote for white prosecutors, especially when you have Judge Joe Brown running, the famous TV judge who did the Martin Luther King trial. He couldn't even win in his own community because they rigged it. After it was exposed, it changed it. Not a lot of noise about it, but we know in the back of the room, we're part of it, that we made a difference. And that's what we really have to do, is make that difference. And to make that difference, you have to have good lawyers. Bill is Arizona. This man you're looking at the screen is Chris Sauter. Chris has become a very personal friend. He was sent to Arizona by Bernie Sanders because of the election. They called up Bill Reisner, Democrat Party. Hey, we need the best guy in the state, Bill. Will you show up and meet with this guy? And Bill says, you know, if you want the best guy who really knows this stuff that I've worked with for 15 years, you want John Brakey. I spent five days with him. He couldn't get Bernie to sue the whole state, but I did. I'm proud of that lawsuit. It almost killed me, okay? But we went at him ruthlessly, and we proved how they suppressed 150,000 votes. It was nice to see them all sweated out on those benches. No, I didn't win, but we did win. We got national news and we exposed. We proved that the voter database was hacked before the, even people knew about anything happening in the voter database. And I'm not up here saying that Russians did anything. I'm up here saying that there was an injection attack. And it was that people went to vote and they found out that they were agreeing. Like for example, in California, uh, uh, Bev Harris's own son-in-law who was a Democrat, went in and he was told he was a Green. 
they had a voter provision. Mm -hmm. You know, I can tell you stories about California. Huh. I'm out of time to be able to do that. I want to yeah. move on. <laughs> but that definitely was a what I call a stack, mm -hmm. a strip, and a flip. And they only steal where they have impunity. And I know that if we train people to look at election systems, I guarantee you I can show you where they're going to steal because they left the barn door open. Because elections are about procedures. And some procedures they do really good, and some procedures are left the barn door open, like Georgia, okay? I'm into Georgia because he took down Merle King, the man who ran the system, who rigged the whole system. They sent him to Arizona to go ahead and talk about my God, if the, these people get those uh, databases, they know how things are working, and there could be mayhem and chaos. My God, that was what we called the trial, mayhem and chaos. Me and Jim Mark used to fight. You know we used to fight about? Who was the mayhem and who was the chaos? Well, he got the mayhem because he was a gun nut, okay? So I let it go. I was the chaos, okay? But it was a tremendous learning experience, and I was very glad I could pay Merle King back because I sent my fellow uh, election people in Georgia the deposition because back there he played a dummy. I don't know any of this because they were programming the whole state is what they were doing. Okay, uh, I would say one thing about my friend Chris, he's well connected. All he does is elections. He actually, pardon me, wrote the book on elections when it comes to recounts. He's the number one election attorney in the country. When he first met me, he was very skeptical. It took a long while to convince him how the problem was because he was always looking from the top down where people like me and Bob and Bill and others who work out there, we look from the bottom up, my God, we see some big assholes screwing us up there all the time, you know, <laughs> really do it from the voting point we look at and, and be able to do it. So basically, what we believe is politics is a game of fear. Those who do not have the ability to frighten power elites do not succeed. The platitude about justice and equality and democracy are just that. They are platitudes. <laughs> Only when the ruling elites become worried about survival do they react. Appealing to the better nature of the powerful is useless. They don't have one. I think Chris Hedge is right. I really admire his writings and what he's saying. And I know that we can go in there like pit bulls. We can smile. We can play that civility card. I play it really well. You know, if you get cross with me, you know what I tell you? Hey. We're going to be really good friends. <laughs> I had to do that in Orange County. That guy was telling me uh, why he doesn't like ballot images, but he's saving the write-ins because it's convenient. Well, I'm sorry. You don't get a chance to pick and choose. And if you don't do this, I'll have to file what we call a writ of mandamus. And, uh, and basically, in state court, we typically file a writ of mandamus. And hey, I learned it from him. That's how we were doing it in Arizona. You know, if that word there is shell, you got a good shot at getting them, okay? Which is a judicial remedy in the form of an order from a court to any government support in court or public authority which that the body is obligated under law to obey as a public duty. For example, stop illegally destroying ballot images which are public records that could prove an election results are real or not. Hey. We can win if we can get in. Sometimes they'll try booting you on technicalities like you didn't dot the I's, cross the T's. You don't give up. You go do it again. That's what a pit bull does. Mm -hmm. Digs in. You know you're right. And I'll say this. I'm very grateful to another person in this country named Brene Brown who taught me that vulnerability is courage. Mm -hmm. We all need to be courageous. And that's what I'm asking of all of you and the people who are listening to this because we do got an aggressive plan. I just want to quickly go through this before I end. Alabama, wow, nothing like going to, to watch a Roy Moore election, what we went through there. You know, this will be online. I got a report that goes into it. And then Ohio, working with Bob, what we did there, we were able to preserve. We got to go back in Ohio and do more work. You know, we're looking to work with Bob very closely. He has a newspaper. Uh, he also has two radio stations. That's going to be our probably center hub, would be out of Ohio, then Tucson, and then, of course, uh, Susan Pinchon, who's a movie hacking democracy. She is a Mainer like me, and that means we're both maniacs. And we're pit bulls with smiles, and I love her very much for what we do together. And we've been, Virginia, we didn't have to sue, we threatened them, we almost went to court, and they caved in and gave in. Maryland, oh my God, Steve's going to tell you about Maryland and the possibilities of great things happening there that we can do. Florida, well, that's a, 
that's a hell of a place, it really is. And uh, good things are happening there. And Steve's also going to talk about what he was doing because, you know, sometimes you need somebody who's going to push things and somebody who's going to go ahead and then follow through in another way. North Carolina, well, that's an ongoing story. All I know is ask your North Carolina State Board of Elections, how much do you expect taxpayers to spend <laughs> to make our elections less secure? Because these Yokos, what they want to do, you know, when I was there, I was running around, we had this big convention, you know, and, uh, and I was going up to the vendors and everybody says, hey, I want to sell you my ballot device, marking device. It's a pin, okay? And I'll just flip to the next slide here so you can get a better appreciating of it. And uh, some vendors charge up to $35 <coughs> for one of these. Hey, we'll give it to you free, really, but it's eight cents is what our cost is. Mm -hmm. Because that's what they want to do. They want to spend money to have a machine mark a ballot that's very easy to counterfeit. And by the way, you notice the barcode on the top of that? Who, anybody here reads barcode? How about QR codes? Secret ones, you know, we're not going to give you what the formula is. That's what's going on. And a lot of that's happening. We have to fight it. But these things, you know, I, I just think this, and I just want to read this one thing. You know, these ballot marking devices, it's like buying a chainsaw to cut your apple pie. It doesn't work as well as a knife, and it's completely a waste of money. We the people are smarter than that, and if we are properly informed, Dr. Spearman, my new brother from a different mother, the president of the NAACP, we bonded. And we're bonding with the other parts of the South, hopefully soon working with Reverend Barber and people there. Because in the South, we have an opportunity to organize, as Bar Reverend Barber would say, is to get the white progressive community behind him, to go ahead and organize the Afro-American communities of people of color, and, uh, and let's take these people on. But we gotta get more people to vote, and we're gonna have to prove that those elections are real. So, wrapping this thing up here right now, uh, going the other way here, because I'm almost at the very end, and I thank everybody for indulging me, is that, uh, again, I've learned to unrig a system. You first have to unrig yourself. The, that's our contact information, okay? And using ballot image technology to its fullest capacity is, is going to be able, uh, well, let's put it this way, a new model is born, and we can make that model work for us. And we're going to be out there working it. I'll be back in North Carolina, Michigan. That's another state that we're getting ready to go into. Pennsylvania. I love to travel. I love to find other light workers like me. I'm really happy finding Len Bernstein and that wonderful family there. It's nice to find other kindred spirits that know that, that they want a future for their children and grandchildren. I've just had the last two years the honor of my newest grandson be named after me. And I look at him and I say, my God, what's life going to be for him at 65? We have to act. And that's what I'm asking people to do, is to help us make elections transparent, trackable, and publicly verified. And I hope that everybody who hears my voice, please get a hold of me. You can, uh, our site is auditusa.org and uh, Audit Elections USA. We're not that hard. My name is John Brakey, and I'm proud to be an election scrutineer, and I want you to be an election scrutineer with me. And there is actual word. You can Google that. Thank you very much. Yeah. And, and who's going to hear next? Is going to come around. I think we should have a, a break. Oh, um, I, I'm thinking you, you brought forth a lot of material. I certainly did. And I'm wondering Great too. if, if people I talk have fast. some questions. Well, I'd like to see Steve go, because uh, I think he, then we can put questions together, because Steve mm -hmm. has a really important presentation mm -hmm. that ties right into that people can ask questions am, on top. Am I correct that, uh, I mean, like, what percentage of machines in California have ballot images? Uh, you know, I, have, I knew that when I checked, when, when I checked two years ago in the last conference, I think it was like maybe 17% only. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and right now, I think that California could be a, pardon me? Two new, two new, uh, we're getting all new voting machines, two companies Yeah, in that's going to be Dominion Whole and Hartford Pacific because yes. ESNS will not do business after that great lady Deborah Bowen took them down. Yeah. Oh. And, uh, and if she's ever listening to us, we love Deborah Bowen because she graduated from conspiracy theorists to become conspiracy factuals because I deal in facts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so we're getting two new systems and do they all have valid images? I don't know. That I don't know. Well, the question is, is getting them to be saved. Yes. And what John said that. is correct, which is that uh, that malicious 
collection registrars, of which there are only some. You know, many are deeply, beautifully honest. We have 58. People. What? <laughs> we have 58. 58 counties. Yeah, I'm just, yeah. Saying, yeah. I'm just saying, uh, yeah. we'll, we'll uh, destroy ballot images with the excuse that uh, they're just redundant. Okay? But one of the things that I like about ballot images is we can also do recounts much more cheaply and efficiently than if we go into a big warehouse and, and try to pull down boxes and do, uh, <coughs> you know, and, yeah. and pull ballots. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, I, that's why I support this. And in 2016, uh, John and I were supporting that right on the trustvote.org site. So. And ballots go missing as well. That's true too. Yes. That's true too. Well, yes, you have a question? Well, I'm just surprised that they're al allowing ballot images. I mean, don't they, um, I mean, I, I remember in Ohio, they just turned on a, on a, a switch and, and then you don't have the image made. No, that's not true. No? That's not true. No, the system, the, the system doesn't work unless it makes an image. Oh, okay. That's it, what they tell people. It was this is the craziest. Uh, That's the, what they argue. The default is to make the images. Right. They actually have to specially program it to stop not to it. make, yeah. And that's what well, they do. No, did, they just right? turn it off. They destroy it. They, yeah, which... They don't save them. But, they, but in, in, the, in the case in Ohio, is that, you know, we did look into it because we went into uh, statement of facts and uh, Cuyahoga County, which is just notorious. I mean, you know, one thing about Ohio, there's 15 counties at that time that had digital. 12 counties says, hey, this is really good stuff for auditing and adjudication, which Steve's going to get into, okay? But the reality is, is that they were making them and then not transferring them, and then the next election was destroying them by rolling over them. Mm -hmm. Okay, that way, well, I didn't destroy it, we just left it behind. Mm -hmm. they, they were using it for write-ins, that was... The only, the only thing they were saving was the write-ins because it was convenient. Think about it, you know, well, I'm going to let Steve explain it because he already is going to do that the next time. I also Talk. wanted to uh, say something about modems that are present in tabulators in some places. And if you look at the ESNS uh, 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 manual, which registrars look at before uh, before they buy it. Originally, ESNS was pushing the uh, that these modems are useful because then we can uh, not only do backup management of tabulators from a distance, but we can also uh, collect all the votes easily mm -hmm. because we have a simple modem where we can get them into the central areas. And you had some really interesting pictures of those cell phones. Um, and there are still areas of the country that have that, which they can be penetrated. They can be penetrated by, by insiders. They can be penetrated Absolutely. by possibly a foreign power. They can be penetrated, all right? So I'd like to see them uh, disabled, actually. And that's what we're trying to do, but I'll say this, is that the first time I found them, I couldn't believe it. I was in Wisconsin and, and, and Milwaukee, and I was just kidding around. In 2016. Yeah, right? and I said mm -hmm. to the elections director, I said, yeah, uh, when you bring the results in, how do you bring them in? Do you use a phone modem, a soft shoe network, or are you using SIM cards? And he said, SIM cards. I go, oh. I was stunned. I didn't believe it. Mm -hmm. Then the next day I went back, and I had my camera ready, and this lady gave me a tour, and she opened it back, and then she pulled out, and I had my camera, and I took it, and I, oh, I'm making video, I'm making video. I had buck fever. I didn't get it. So it took Florida. When I got to Florida and found him, is that that's what I focused on, and I had three machines to nail down and prove, and then who, what, and why wrote a story. But again, we're not seeing this on mainstream media, okay? Mm -hmm. And uh, so we need a good grassroots operation. We need to find the funding we need to be able to do that and empower and, and then go to those board of elections and start training these people who are being trained by ESNS and been saying that timing marks are barcodes in defense of their craziness. Mm. Right, and, and also let's remember that ESNS and Dominion were gave the most recent uh, uh, financial contributions to mm. Mitch McConnell. Mm. Uh, and, and they control together between those two 80% of the market they've also, yeah. they also 
used, in fact, Dominion was the one that developed fractionalism votes. And and uh, yes, and yes, took too. it on yeah. too. Well, well Domin Domin Dominion is Diebold, you're right. Domin Dominion is Diebold. That's right. They, they had to change their name because of their poor, very poor performance in 2004. They got Steve 